Freedom, today I want to talk to you about trending hashtags. What are they and what can they do for you? I'm sure that you've heard people talking about what's trending now, or what's happening, what's crack a lackin', homie g dog? No? No? Just me? Okay. A trending topic or trending hashtag on Twitter, Facebook, anywhere really, is all about what's what's popular, what is being discussed at this very moment. Trending hashtags are constantly changing. A top 10 trend can be gone in a matter of minutes, hours, or days. You never really know how long that's going to be on the trending list, or how long it's going to be a popular topic. When you use a trending hashtag in your videos or social media update posts, it has the potential to give you a whole lot of exposure in a very short amount of time. And it's really important that you do this in a creative way. In marketing speak, Hopping on a trending hashtag has the potential to give you as much exposure as a one second ad at the Super Bowl. Though it is important to note, you don't want to spam trending hashtags. This can actually get you banned from Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and a whole lot of others. Now that we've gone over all that, now the question is, where do you find these magical sources of traffic? Right now, only Twitter and Google Plus display what's trending on their website. On Twitter, it's going to be on the left-hand side when you visit their website and you look at your feed of other miscellaneous things. You can see what is trending on their site. Google calls it what's hot. It's the same basic thing. Google Plus is a strange animal all of its own, so you can't always assume that something that's trending on Google Plus is going to be trending on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or any other social site. However, when you look at what's trending on Twitter, usually that will translate over to Instagram and or Facebook. There are also some really cool resources that you can visit to do a little bit of research, which I do recommend. For instance, hashtag.org. The great thing about hashtags.org is it shows you ascending and descending trending hashtags. That's great because you can find out whether you're on the way in or the way out so that you don't either waste your time or so that you can plan accordingly. Statagram's a really cool one because it allows you to compare and contrast and possibly find alternate tags for anything on Instagram. These usually also do translate over to Twitter. Last but not least, TrendsMap is a really cool tool that I find myself using a lot. The great thing about TrendsMap is that it allows you as a user to find out what is trending and where. So that, for instance, let's say you ran a local beauty blog or something. You can actually find out in your local area what is trending and what is hot for that. If you run, say, a gaming channel like my friend Tennessee Gaming, say he wanted to only focus on Tennessee, he could actually find out what's trending in his area and capitalize on that which allows him to build that funnel that we talked about a few videos ago so that he can target his audience and then of course pick up people from outside that cone but by targeting it so specifically he's doing himself a great favor because he's picking up more people who are possibly interested in his content. The steps for using this is really simple. Just simply a few times a day or a few times a week log on, see what's trending and see if that has anything to do with your content. Don't try to shoehorn it in somewhere where it doesn't belong because people don't appreciate that. However, if you see an opportunity, take it. Share a funny image or some kind of video that deals with whatever the trending hashtag is. As a matter of fact, Oreo is a really good example of this because they were among the first few organizations or people to tweet out about hashtag Super Bowl, hashtag blackout, and many other things. In fact, if you look right on screen now, you'll find an example from Fashion Week in Paris. It was enough to get people to laugh, and as a result, they got a lot of shares, which is awesome. Tapping into niche markets is also a really good plan. So, for instance, going back to the example I gave you about my friend Tennessee Gaming, he could very easily tap into niche markets within his target market, which may or may not be Tennessee, and he can use that to his benefit. For example, on screen now, you'll see an example of someone capitalizing on hashtag Music Mondays. Of course, this is a brand, and he's doing fairly well, but it's, again, enough to get people to share, empathize with, and create an emotional reaction. All in all, there are a few lessons you should take away from this video, and they are, be quick when it comes to trending hashtags. 
Getting in early can give you a lot of exposure really quickly, especially if you do it in a fun and clever way. Do your research on the sites mentioned earlier in the video and of course linked in the description. Doing your research on these sites will allow you to find out what's going to be relevant to you and your audience so that you can have a better result. Don't be scared to capitalize on niche markets. These markets may seem smaller, however, being able to leverage these smaller numbers who are probably going to be a lot more interested in whatever it is you're doing can help you with greater returns in the long run. One of the great things about this is you're a lot less likely to be drowned out in a sea of voices. Because you're dealing with a smaller number of people on a popular hashtag, you have the chance of making sure that your message is seen. And of course, because they're more interested in whatever the topic is, you also do a lot better. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you have, let us know in the comment section down below. Till next time, I'm Anthony. Like, subscribe, comments please.